Hi, buddy. This is Dave Vellante, and I'm here with Stu Miniman. We're inside the studios at Wikibon and our Boston office, and we're here to preview HP Discover. This is the Cube's fifth year at HP Discover. Stu, we started in 2011. We're really excited this year to have the Cube again. Uh, Stu and I are going to set that up. Before we do, I want you to go to hpdiscover.social. Check out the new digital experience that we'll be bringing to HP Discover. It's a second screen experience if you're going to be at the show, and if you're not at the show, it's an opportunity to connect with other social influencers and watch the live stream. You can watch Meg, Meg Whitman's keynotes. You can watch the Cube and get all kinds of other cool content. Stu, I think the big story this year is HP's restructuring. I mean, Meg is absolutely going to have to address that in her keynote. Uh, they certainly talked about it on the earnings call um, uh, recently, and it's a big deal. Uh, I think it's an inevitable uh, situation that they had to split off into two companies. You got two dramatically different businesses, and we're going to talk about that a little bit. But I think that Meg is going to have to really explain to the audience what's going on there, what the new strategy is, why this is important, how it's going to help HP and its customers in the midterm and long term. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah, Dave, absolutely. I mean, Discover has always been the enterprise show for HP, so th th there shouldn't be a huge change for most of the audience there, but it's been one of these things that's just been hanging over like a lead balloon. H how is HP going to change? What's going to happen? And, you know, we're three years into Meg, uh, you know, doing her thing here, and, you know, this is a piece that just has to get done so that HP can move forward with its mission to help enterprise improve IT. Yeah, I mean, I think HP HP Inc., which is going to be the PC and printer division, is going to be really essentially a cash flow type of, 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 of operation. And it's going to be for, you know, the type of investor that wants to get, you know, predictable cash flows. I mean, it's Inc. is very profitable for HP. I think HP Enterprise is going to be positioned as the, the growth company, and we're going to talk about that. That's obviously, they're facing some challenges there, although there are, are some, some tailwinds and headwinds as, as we talk about. And so, so that's gonna, gonna you know, cause some dislocation in the near term. There's no question about it. There are dis-synergies when you bring companies together, Stu, as you well know, having worked at a large company, you can find synergies when you split companies up. IT and legal, you know, centralized marketing functions, those synergies go away. So HP has to make up those synergies in a couple of ways. One is with greater focus, sharper focus, better execution, and then continue to take costs out of the business. So that's, we're gonna hear a lot about that. now. Let's focus, Stu, if we can, on, on the enterprise piece, which is really you know, where our main area of coverage will be. It's mixed. Um, you're seeing overall, actually, the enterprise group did pretty well this last quarter you know, relative to its peers. I mean, essentially, the business is flat. Now, one of the challenges that HP has, of course, as all companies in the US are facing right now, are currency headwinds. HP's got a double whammy because pr its printer competition is largely Japanese. So they not only have you know appreciated dollar conversions, they're competing with competitors that can sell you know at more attractive prices. But back to the enterprise, Stu. Um, the big news uh, this year was really the the ISS, the Industry Standard Server Group. It blew away uh, its numbers. I mean, the growth there was 17% in constant currency, 11% in, uh, in in you know real dollar terms. So 17% growth. In, in, in an apples to apples comparison with last quarter, that's huge. And that has been a soft spot, uh, ISS. The networking side underperformed and disappointed. So what's going on in networking? Yeah, Dave, for, first of all, I, I, from what I've heard in general, servers had a little bit of a comeback this last quarter, so HP's you know, riding that wave. Uh, when you look at networking, um, you know, it, it's, been, it's been a little bit of a tough transition uh, for, for HP as to where they're going to have their big growth. Uh, the SDN you know, has not matured as fast, which uh, you know, many in the networking industry hoped would uh, mean that we get people off of Cisco. Uh, NFV is an, an area that uh, HP has been focused on. Uh, they, they've had some uh, you know, chairs shuffling there. Um, and I now Sargali's running that. Yeah, so, so Sargali's running this uh, n now. Uh, uh, Bethany Meyer was running it last year. Um, one of the things that actually I li like what HP HP's done is uh, they're really understanding that we need to go to more commodity hardware. And while HP's always used, uh, you know, merchant silicon, uh, they are now doing what they call bright box. Which a bright box is is you take uh, a, a, a the hardware itself uh, from a company like Quanta, one of the ODMs, the Taiwanese typically. On top of it, you have some flexibility on the software, so things like Cumulus Linux can sit on top of that. And what you wrap that with is HP brand, HP services, kind of the, you know, the, the warm hug that the enterprise wants. So they, they say, I can get a cheaper price 
but it's going to work. I can trust it, and I like it. Um, Dell has moved down this uh, this path before HP does, uh, but it's still early, so we really haven't seen the results if this good strategy actually turns into good revenue. Uh, yeah, so as I say, the networking business was was down you know, pretty considerably, about 11% in, in constant currency. Uh, I think, as you, as you pointed out, it was the server business, the ISS group in particular, that really drove the business. And I think, Stu, that's a, a, a Windows Server 2003 refresh, and I think it's also the Gen 9 kicking in. Yep. You know, that's a great product, and that's, that's been a tailwind mm -hmm. for HP. And what it resulted in, so as I said, it was it's basically a flat business, you know, in real terms. But in constant currency, the enterprise group actually grew about 5%, which is which is significantly better than sort of the average of, of the peers. Yeah, and, and Dave, if you want an indication whether networking is ripe for some growth and change, uh, you know, Wall Street Journal reported today that Avago is looking to buy Broadcom, at least, I think, was it $37 billion? So, massive acquisition. If it actually goes through, uh, you've actually got the group that used to be Agilent, which was a spin out from HP that really knew that, that Silicon, that ASIC business, um, and Avago, who bought Emulex, uh, you know, just a few months back, uh, had bought some LSI's old business, and now if they get Broadcom, they are a massive player network, and HP will be one of its biggest partners. Okay, and then HP, of course, made an acquisition recent, recently in networking to shore up what, what its wireless yeah, piece. Yeah, it's, it's the a, SDN a, piece. A, a, a uh, uh, wait, it's Consenta. Um, oh, th there's that one, well, and then there's the other one. It was Aruba, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Aruba, Aruba's a big yeah. acquisition in the wireless space. Absolutely. Yeah, so Real that's a, brand, that shores up their Real wireless strategy. Yeah, so I mean, there's, there's lots of consolidation and moves going so on. So the, the, the world needs a second the second alternative to Cisco, and, and is HP it? Or is it some other SDN supplier? So, um, you know, from a market share standpoint, HP has been number two. Uh, unfortunately, you know, we haven't really seen a lot of growth the last you know, few quarters, as you mentioned, from HP, um, and th there hasn't really been a new leader in the SDN space or moving that forward. Um, you know, s some of it is going to be that transition on the hardware side that we were just talking about, and the software is still maturing. And we, you know, we know change in the network world and in the enterprise network world, especially, is usually measured in a decade. So it, it's tough still in the early days to so sort that out. Stu, for years I've been saying HP's a company that has to shrink to grow. Um, it's it's been doing the shrink part. It hasn't so much been doing the the growth part. Let's stick to the uh, the enterprise group, which actually did grow in constant currency. Storage was very mixed. Uh, so storage was down 8% uh, in, in real dollars, it, it, but it was, it was only down 2% in constant currency. But still, what's happening in storage, Stu, and I'd love to get your take on this, is the, the new stuff, which is in the hot, you know, shiny new toys, which is 3PAR, and now, of course, the 3PAR's been in since 2011, is growing very, very nicely. And, and we're going to talk about all flash in a minute. There's a big kicker from that. But the old stuff is declining faster than the new stuff is rising, and so they're not able to, still not able to find that growth groove swing. But they've got a good portfolio, particularly with the three par products. But what's your take on HP and storage? Yeah, so, so Dave, a couple of years ago, HP said we have this whole portfolio, EVA was shrinking, where are we focusing? And there were four products that they said we're focusing on. Three par was at the top of the list. Uh, store virtual is one that doesn't get talked about a ton. I mean, those that have been in the storage industry for a while, remember Left Hand was like one of the original iSCSI companies that was really cool. Left Hand turned into like the first like uh, VSA a solution that was really cool. And oh, by the way, we talk about software to find storage. That that's what the left hand technology was. So in many ways, I felt that what is now store virtual today was really ahead of its time. Um, we just finished up the you know the numbers for server sand for the last year, and HP is a player in this space. And if you look at kind of the hyperconverged market, HP by the end of this year should be number two or number three player. So they don't get a lot of talk in that space. Uh, matter of fact, one of the major analyst firms kind of excludes that um, when they, they put all the pieces together. But if you look at where it, what it's done over the last couple of years, it's really grown well. And of course, three parts you mentioned is you know the, the shining gem in what HP has been doing, uh, to doing great in kind of the hybrid all flash array um, you know mix that we're kind of having out there. Well, uh, I mean, I like to follow the money, as you know. Three parts where the money is. So. The, the, when HP bought 3PAR, the, the, it was doing it several things. One is it was filling the hole and it, because its EVA line needed to be shored up. The, the other thing is it was buying an architecture that could go down market and compete with EMC's VMAX, which clearly 3PAR has been a sort of thorn in, in EMC's high-end side. Now with uh, all flash arrays, I think you know, 3PAR actually surprised me. So what 3PAR did is they, they didn't go out and buy uh, an all-flash array company like EMC did, like IBM did. What they did is they, they re-architected essentially 3PAR to accommodate all-flash arrays. Now a lot of people said, of course a lot of the competitors and particularly the startups were saying, well that's a bolt-on. Which is what 3PAR's marketing was 
for all those guys trying to replicate virtualization. What surprised me is how successful it's been and from an architectural standpoint. It's a, it's a very solid product. It's, it's got great performance. Uh, it scales. It's not a scale out architecture per se, but with Federation, you can get you know eight nodes and David Floyer talks about that in terms of sort of being where that sweet spot of that market. And, and so, but the, but the real interesting thing I think about uh, uh, three power 7450 and uh, I always forget the product names, whatever else they call the all flash array is the stack. So to me, Stu, there's only two companies out there, and um, maybe I'm missing somebody, but that from an all-flash array standpoint, that have a full, robust, mature, hardened storage stack. That's HP with the three-par you know, all-flash array, and it's IBM. Originally, IBM, you had to connect behind an SVC, but with the new product, they've integrated that. So HP and, and, three, and, and IBM, I think, stand alone there. You know, Extreme I.O., you know, Pure, you know, the, the other guys, Solid uh, Fire, Solid Fire, great products but they don't have the maturity of the stack. Uh, and, and so, to me, that's an advantage. Why? Because people want the sets of storage services that they're used to. They want to know that it's going to give them five nines or maybe even six nines. Uh, they want to know that it's going to have the replication capabilities, the failover capabilities, the recovery capabilities, the, the, the data movement capabilities where they have to move data, et cetera, et cetera. So, I'm quite sanguine on 3PAR's all flash strategy. Yeah, no, it, it sounds good. And, so and I think Gartner had them as the fastest growing in its recent uh, I don't know, report or magic yeah. quadrant. So, so, so Dave, the other piece we haven't touched on yet is Helion. It's a big piece of the strategy, something that's gone through a lot of change from HP. I think, uh, you know, it, it's interesting. You, you talk well, let me set it up, yeah, Stu, because okay. on, the, on the call, yeah. on the call, on the earnings call, not a lot of talk about cloud, yeah. not enough talk about software. Software was down, and we'll come back to that. Um, not a lot of talk about, you know, analytics and paths and all these things that are, that are exploding. So, what about cloud? What about uh, a Heli a Helion? I mean, Meg mentioned it, but it really wasn't a focal point on the call. Well, ov obviously, the, the eucalyptus acquisition got a lot of people excited. We thought Martin yeah. Mikos was going to come in. He's going to run this business. The strategy was going to get in shape. OpenStack last year, HP came in, said billion dollars, thousand people. You know, we're all in on OpenStack. And then a lot of things change. So a little bit of shuffling around. Um, and I had, I had a good chance at uh, OpenStack Vancouver to sit down with a bunch of the HP Helion people, talk to a lot of the practitioners here. HP's got a lot of good people. The strategy is, is coming into good shape. But you know, you got to do all that before revenue starts flowing in, Dave. Uh, and you, you talk about like the PaaS layer. Uh, you know, Cloud Foundry you know, has the foundation now. And you've got Pivotal, IBM, and HP. Um, and HP is strong here, but it's not nearly as far along with its messaging and its selling as Pivotal and IBM Oz. And from an OpenStack standpoint, HP's contributing a bunch. HP's putting together a lot of solutions. As a matter of fact, one of my highlights of the interviews that I did, uh, Bobby Patrick uh, really laid out how HP Helion isn't just OpenStack, but how it's going to tie together you know, all the clouds, all the applications, because we know customers aren't just doing one cloud and they've got so many applications. They're doing Amazon, they've got Salesforce, of course they're using Microsoft apps all over the uh, place, um, and they've got what's in-house. And if OpenStack is going to be what's now called the integration engine, HP Helion has to have management software that can help with identity management and security across all of your environments. And it's early days, and you know we know how much management needs to mature overall in the market uh, for cloud. But you know H HP definitely is a contender here. Well, HP has a strong security storage, as you're saying, but they've got to, in my opinion, to play that hybrid cl cloud card, right? I mean, they they kind of head faked themselves in the market a little bit. Remember, they did announce the HP Public Cloud, and they were kind of looking at maybe taking Amazon head on. Well, that didn't work out so well, and it's taken HP a long time to get here. Now, having said that. Look what happened when IBM, you know, went out and bought, you know, SoftLayer and 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 started to shore up its assets around there and did Bluemix, with, which is running on Cloud Foundry. So, so it's it is early days. I would like to see, you know, a, a, a faster rate of acceleration uh, for HP because it is such a crucial business. People, we know that people want to buy IT as a service. Amazon has shown that. The rest of the industry is showing that. HP's own customers are telling us that. You know, we've had you know really interesting interviews with guys like Alan Nance. That's the direction that they're headed. So it's natural that HP is going to be 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 you know, delivering those types of services. I'd like to see it happen faster. Yeah, yeah, Dave. Uh, on the closing remark from Joe Tucci, uh, talking about the VirtuStream acquisition for 1.2 billion dollars, was Joe said, "If you don't have a cloud-first strategy, you don't have a strategy." 
We know that Microsoft is, you know, Azure public cloud first and then they bring it in. Um, I'd be shocked if Meg makes such a statement in her keynote. And unfortunately, if she doesn't make such a statement, um, I'm questioning how cloud fits into the overall Well, strategy. I think actually you will hear a lot of emphasis on cloud at, at HP Discover. I think there has to be. I think H HP, it's got to get through the, the split got to get through that, they ha HP has to address that, because people I'm sure are saying, well what does this mean for me? Once it gets through that, which I'm presuming is going to be in the first, first day keynote, it's got to turn its attention to all the hot stuff. What are those hot things? It's cloud, it's analytics, it's taking systems of record and systems of engagement and overlaying systems of intelligence and delivering infrastructure that can support those new mobile apps. That's what I want to hear about, and I want to hear proof points that HP's got the capabilities, the technology, the portfolio, and the customer momentum to actually deliver on that. Yeah, Dave, I mean, we, we know HP actually runs a separate show uh, here in the Boston area to focus on the big data piece, so I expect to hear some of it discover, but it's not one of the main focuses. It's a little bit more of the infrastructure piece. Well, you know, that's a great point. I mean, Vertica, the Vertica conference that we actually bring the Cube to in August is, is a phenomenal conference. I would say of all those MPP players, when you take Vertica, uh, you take Natiza, Aster Data, uh, Greenplum. I think that Vertica is demonstrating that it it has you know one of the best, or if not the best, architecture. You talk to its customers, you find out what they're doing, you ask about the competition. It's it's hot. That's a great great show with real practitioners. So maybe they they save some of the 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 content for Vertica conference. But I would really like to see more in HP Discover because. That to me, that is the future. Again, people talk about systems of record and transactions and social data and systems of engagement. It's that data overlay, that systems of intelligence that, that Vertica can deliver and HP has a great asset there. Yeah, yeah, Dave, absolutely. When we went to IBM Interconnect, it really talked about moving up the stack. You take platforms, you have APIs for services, you talk about the applications, you talk about the business value. Even EMC World this year, which is traditionally a storage and infrastructure show, really pushed up talking about some of the cloud native applications, talking about that uh, piece. So, you know, the hope is that many of these infrastructure shows can move up the stack, talk more, more about the developer, talk about the business value in the applications, which if you don't have the applications piece, you're just talking about more of the plumbing. So, okay, so good summary. Uh, I mean, I, you know, come back to the, to the money. So HP still throwing off a lot of cash. It did about, you know, seven to 800 million in free cash flow in the quarter. It's got a target of three and a half to four billion free cash flow for the year, which by the way is down. And it's down, you know, in, in a large part because of the currency headwinds, but you'd like to see a company the size of HP throw off more than say three and a half or four billion. That's about what EMC throws off. EMC is about the quarter of the size. So you'd like to see HP become more profitable. Splitting off and getting more focus should help. Uh, the key for HP is to maintain relevance with its product line, continue to, to, to juice the R&D because we know under previous administrations, HP squeezed R&D. You can't just flick the switch. We've said that many, many times. Um, you saw that with 3PAR. 3PAR execution has been outstanding. I'd like to see that in networking. It seems like Antonio Neri really has got the server group you know, back in business. I mean, you know, B, the BCS, the old sort of digital line, is going to do its, you know, it's going to fade away. You know, it's going to keep it, maintain its customer base and keep those guys happy. And I love that part of the business. I mean, I love those guys. I love talking to the, to the people who are using it. They're unique systems, but it's not a growth market. Um, they've got to really maintain that R&D edge and, and basically allow the, the, the old stuff to hit bottom and have the new stuff you know, exceed. I'll give you the last words, Stu. What are you, uh, what are you looking for in Discover and what are you looking for for HP? Yeah, so, so uh, for HP overall, Dave, uh, you know, you think about what we talked about here. It was some of these big acquisitions, 3PAR, Vertica, that are some of the shining gems there. HP needs to become more profitable after the split so that they can make some of those more strategic moves, make some of those big bets. Where are things like containerization going to fit into their strategy? Uh, and you know, what is the new HP? Uh, it's you know, HP is one of the companies that really helped at the foundation of Silicon Valley. And you know, we talk about putting that innovation back into HP. Yeah, HP is Sil Silicon Valley icon. I have said many times, HP's got to get back to its roots and invent. I'm sure we're going to hear a lot about the machine. Speaking of invention, from uh, Martin Fink, who uh, runs HP Labs. Um, okay, thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks, Stu, for for helping out. Check out HP Discover. Dot social, uh, that's our new digital experience. Watch the cube at siliconangle.tv and check out all the research at wikibon.com. Thanks for watching everybody, we'll see you next time.